What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and uh, yeah, I'm having a pretty damn good day. So good because a subscriber ended up sending in a story to the Instagram DMs about how they had a Karen neighbor that uh, owned a meth lab. You know, just your typical Karen. Real talk, Karen's having the balls to call the cops on anyone while also having a meth lab. Just goes to show you how mentally unstable most of them are. I'm gonna call the cops on you guys for being loud, but I'm I'm selling meth and I don't understand the irony in any of that. Like honestly dude, Karens are really out of control. Regardless when this was sent into my Instagram inbox, I just knew I had to share it with you guys right away because like it's right up our alley. So uh yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. Yeah, I pull up and I got those. You haters looking cheesy like some nacho, but I will never stop though. Fuck it, I got the Anyways, the person who sent in this story used to live in a duplex, which is basically like a house cut in half and you share a big wall with your neighbor, right? And usually it tends to be like a, a major wall, you know, in your living room and like the master bedroom that is shared with your next door neighbor. So like it or not, you kind of get to know your neighbor when you're living in a duplex. Like it's just the reality of living, you know, one thin wall away from somebody is you kind of get used to them. You might hear them on the toilet every now and then. You might hear them doing and some wild stuff and that's just how it is and basically the way that this duplex was divided was a little bit different than normal there was like a an above and downstairs unit and uh, this guy and his family had moved into the downstairs unit and on top of them was a Karen and at the time they didn't really know she was a Karen but their upstairs neighbor had this dog that for like whatever reason would try to tunnel to China at 2 in the morning above their bedrooms and keep them up like this dog would genuinely like go out of their way to just scratch and dig the hole through the carpet to try to somehow escape this crazy Karen it was living with and maybe get into a normal person's house. And so after a few nights of moving into this duplex and having a dog trying to tunnel into their house and like eat them alive in their sleep, uh, th this guy's mom was like, all right, I've had enough and told the dad to go over there and try to solve the problem, you know? So the dad goes over there and is like, hey, excuse me, your dog is kind of digging and scratching while we're trying to sleep. So is there any way that you can try to keep an eye on him and just prevent him from being loud at night, you know? So they didn't go out of their way to be mean. They didn't like throw eggs at their house and leave a sign covered in dog poop that said you're loud and stinky, like nothing like that. They just went and knocked and said, hey, can you quit being obnoxious when we're trying to sleep? Which is fair enough when, you know, you live underneath somebody. And uh, basically, these people were at work all day and they would just ignore the dog all day. And when they would come home, they would just kind of like ignore it. So its only way to, you know, get attention or entertain itself at all while it was being ignored all day was to try to like dig through and scratch on the floor. So anyways, when they had gone over to complain about the dog and all the scratching and stuff, they, uh, the neighbor wouldn't let them into her building at all. Like, her part of the building at all. The house is kind of cut in half, and when they went to knock on her part of it and tell her that her dog was going crazy, she immediately got, like, super, super defensive and was like, oh, no, 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 that, hey, you, you don't have to come in. In any way, she acts all weird when we go to like see what's going on and see what's going on and tell her that to calm her dog down and she's acting all weird but my dad kind of says like, hey, whatever, we don't really need to come in, it's kind of weird you're being defensive but is there any way that you can get your dog to calm down? And as soon as his dad said the words calm down to this Karen, it was like something inside of her brain snapped, you know? All sanity that was left inside of her, any trace of her not being a sea wench that will belch insults at you with the strength of a thousand sailors goes out the window and full Karen moan was activated dude like she blinked and her eyes turned red you know she got aimbot some terminator vision so she has clearly just lost it you know being told to calm down is the worst thing you can tell a Karen because they take it as a challenge they're like oh you think you can tell me to calm down huh well who do you think you are it's like I don't know your neighbors who who have a dog that's trying to dig into their house well maybe he just wants to cuddle with you it's like, I, I, okay, so anyways, the Karen freaks out, and she basically says, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, I'll keep my dog under control to their faces, but slams the door, and that night, she's, like, purposely 
playing with the dog and stomping on the floor at night. And so the dog is running back and forth, being even louder than it had before. And at the time, you know, they had three kids in their house and they're like trying to get some sleep. And this lady is now going out of her way to be so petty that she's making her dog like run a practice marathon every night above all of their rooms just to make sure that they get as little sleep as humanly possible. And, uh, you know, this lady is obviously going out of her way at night to cause problems and be loud with the dog, but she has the balls to call the police on her neighbors for a noise complaint. That's right, these people hadn't been doing anything too loud, like, there was no reason for there to be a noise complaint, but she just decided since they weren't reacting to her going out of her way to make noise and try to distract them that, like, she would just call the police and get them in trouble? Which is super ballsy considering the plot twist at the end of the story. Like, I I'm just gonna let you guys know this now, we'll get there too at the end of it. This Karen was low-key running a meth lab out of her house, and calling the cops on your neighbors when you're the one running the meth lab genuinely might be the ballsiest move ever. Like, yes officer, these people are annoying me. Please don't check in my house, I definitely promise there's not a meth lab in the garage, officer. Like, the balls that you have to have in order to call the police on somebody when you are next door with a meth lab it is pretty insane. But then again, maybe that's the meth talking. Like, I guess if you also have a meth lab in your house, you might not be, you know, the person who makes the most reasonable, well thought out decisions ever. And this lady starts calling the police on them all the time, at least two times a week for like noise complaints at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So, um, it was just ridiculous. And to make matters worse, it wasn't even like they were being loud but the city they were in at the time didn't even have a law that you couldn't be loud. So she would call the cops at least twice a week and the police would come over, talk to us, and they understood there was no issue and then they would leave. But it was just annoying, you know, like having to stop whatever you're doing and explain to the cops that your neighbor is just in fact a crazy lady with a meth lab is like not the most relaxing thing to do after a good time on uh, <laughs> working all day. Like you just got back from the coal mine, dude. You've been sweating your balls off for, you know, I don't know, 18 hours straight and your neighbor calls the cops on you for being too loud because you dropped a fork. And to make matters even worse, this lady had the pettiness inside of her that on Christmas morning, she didn't talk, knock, didn't say Merry Christmas, but instead, she called the cops on them when they were opening presents for being too loud. So the police, by the way, show up and it takes like an hour to get it calmed down. So she goes out of her way to like ruin Christmas for these people. She's calling the police twice a week. She's going insane. She's not even warning them anymore and telling them to quiet down. She's just calling the police on, on Christmas morning. Which is a super Grinch move, by the way, Karen. Like, ruining Christmas is just too far. If you want to be a sea wench and hate everybody every other day of the year, that's fine. But you gotta have a truce on Christmas. Anyways, after all of this, they still aren't really trying to fight back, and like, that that takes niceness. You guys are good people. Personally, after she ruins Christmas, I'm going over to that lady's door with a hatchet, and I'm causing problems, you know? Like, that's what I'm doing. But they decide to be nice, and they wake up one morning, and there's this really, really strong stench that's like seeping through the walls, right? And they go knock on the door, and they're like, hey, can you smell this as well? And she's not answering at all. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. But they say that the smell, the smell is like a smoky chemical smell, you know? And so they aired the area out. And for whatever reason, she calls the police on them for coming and like knocking on the door. You know, she's like, oh, for whatever reason, it's super weird that you're calling me and asking me if I smell this strange stuff, even though you smell, you know, we share a wall. I'd probably smell it too. And so the fire department and three police vehicles come out and they start like testing this person's house to make make sure that there's nothing unsafe. And they're testing it and they don't find anything unsafe and then they go over to the Karen's house and they knock on the door and they're like, hey, can you let us in? We obviously smell some chemical stuff in the air and we wanna make sure that it's safe. And she gets super defensive. She's like, no, you're not coming into this apartment. Like, there's no way I'm gonna let you in. You don't have a warrant, you're not getting in here. And there's nothing they can really do because they didn't have a warrant. Like, they can't push her out of the way and say, too bad, we're searching this hoe. So they have to leave. And as they're leaving, they're talking to the family and uh, the guy from the fire department is like, trust me, 
you know, we've experienced a meth lab smell before, and that's pretty much what it smells like to me, so I wouldn't be surprised if your neighbor is running a meth lab. That's right, the fire department was just out here dropping the bomb that Karen is running a meth lab next door to these kids and calling the cops. The vibes are immaculate. How did this Karen get involved in the meth world too? Because I'm just saying, I feel like Karens would not do very well. Like, I've seen Breaking Bad. I know the type of people that are hurling meth. Could you imagine the Karen she pulls up? She's like, um, excuse me, let me talk to your manager. Ma'am, we're drug dealers. We don't have managers. That's not how this works. She's like, well, let me talk to whoever you're in charge of because you guys are being very not nice with the way you're trying to run my street, okay? Like, how does a Karen get involved in that world, dude? That would be the most annoying thing ever. You're, like, trying to just go buy some meth, hypothetically. You should never do meth, by the way. That's a horrible thing to do. And this Karen is just like, well, you know, maybe if you worked harder, you could have bought more meth. Like, why are you just like, what, what are your plans in life? Are you in college, young man? Like, what are you doing? You know, you're getting a lecture from her while she's selling you meth. But, yeah, basically, they find out that their neighbor is low-key running a meth lab. And, uh, because she never let the police in and, like, they could never prove that the smell was coming from her, there was nothing they could really do. And for the next couple weeks, she just kept calling the landlord and calling the police and complaining about the neighbors and just doing her best to cause all these problems. And then for no reason in the middle of her lease, she just disappeared. The duplex and, like, her lease in the apartment ended up being for sale and nobody knows why she vanished. The person who sent me this said that they were personal friends with the landlord and they were like, I don't know, she just said she needed to leave quickly, which I guess does kind of make sense. Sometimes when you're in the meth business, you gotta get out of town pretty quick. So, uh, yeah, this crazy Karen, literally just over the fact that her dog was digging at night, started a feud with the family and was calling the cops even though she was running a meth lab all along. I know there wasn't, like, a crazy climax, but I, I knew you guys would love that story because something about a Karen owning a meth lab is insane. But on that note, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button, comment down below, and subscribe. If you like the intro song, it's a new one. I, I just released it on Spotify. I'll put a link down below, so go check it out if you want, but if not, no pressure. And if you're new, be sure to turn on notifications because I give people notification shoutouts every day. Today's notification shoutout goes to Mason Soares. Big thanks. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'm gonna go see if any of my neighbors are Karen, because I'm really desperate for clickbait again. Have yourselves an incredible day, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.